to the final investigation and go back into the letter J would reveal that the letter J was originally the letter R and came into existence for the first time on the face of the earth within the 17th century. 17, 18, 19, 20, which gives the letter some 400 years in its total existence on the face of the earth. Bear in mind, we should say in order, who is the Ashura, what is the play of 2,000 years ago, and the letter J is only 400 years ago. So if we take the 400 from the 2,000, we get 1,600 years. So it took 1,600 years after the Savior was to the church, after his birth, after the fulfillment of his ministry, after his death, burial, and resurrection, and the apostles were not preaching and teaching his name. It took 1,600 years after that for your Bible, Bible translators, to remove the name of Yahshua and replace it with Jesus. Likewise, the first time that Yahweh revealed his name to is a man who would be called Moses at the backside of Mount Sinai. And that took place some 4,000 years ago. And the letter changes will be 400 years. So when you take the 400 from the 4,000, you get 3,600 years. So it took 3,600 years after Yahweh revealed his name to Moses and gave Moses and the children of Israel commandments to honor his holy name. Also instructed Moses to go and tell Pharaoh that Yahweh is the that the children of Israel will agree. See, it took 3,600 years after all of that, those events, for your Bible translators, in seeing the original name of our high heavenly father in the original Hebrew manuscripts, they refused to put it. See? And the Hebrew said, Jehovah. Was it possible, but still is impossible, for the Creator's name to be called Jehovah? But it took 3,600 years after the hour of obedience name for the first man Moses. It took 3,600 years after that for you to have the J or the sound of the letter J any part of the world. So such names as Jesus. Jehovah, John, and Joshua, and possible renderings of those names that you have in your Bible. When we examine the name Jesus, J E is originally I E. When pronounced, it is pronounced E O L E, which is the name of a battle war. The part S U S in the name Jesus comes from Z U S U S, the Supreme Court of the Greeks. And Christ, which is a title, comes from Krishna, the Hindu Sanatana God. So, right within the name of Jesus and the title of Christ, we have a Babylonian Lord, a Greek Lord, and a Hindu God, three pagan gods of three pagan or different nationalities. The true, correct, original, and the holy name of God, my heavenly Father, is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from this original Hebrew, Tetra Grammaton. Tetra meaning four, one, four, three, four. And Grammaton representing these four characters or symbols in Hebrew, which are your name for me. The Hebrew language is a consonantal language in that they do not use the aid of vowels in writing their, their characters. So as represented by these four characters, it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. The Hebrew language is read from right to left, unlike that of the English language.
that is better than the other brand. When the evil gets your counter, it's transliterated letter to letter, some to some, several to several. From evil to English, this is a Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the evil catch up on the pronounceable Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people, we as English speaking people, we need the aid of our vowels to make our words pronounceable. And these vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, T, in the place of that. To the divine vision and revelation, because we need, in order to know which power to use, and bear the place that one once more the foolish man Adam that was drawn out of virgin motherhood, using the only power in his name, which is the A, placing him between the Y and the H to make pronounceable the Yah, the masculine portion of our heavenly father's name. You are further instructed to go to the foolish woman Eve that was drawn out of the man Adam, using the only power in his name. In her name, sorry, which is the E. Placing it between the W and the H to make pronounceable with the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. You are my Heavenly Father, whose true, correct, original, and holy name is Yahweh, is both male and female in principle, right to be said. And we feel it often you will testify that this is true, because right to be known is in the body. Whether we be man or woman, we possess both male and female glands or hormones. The male gland or hormone that is in everybody's body is called androgen, symbolized by the shape of the A is correctly made between the Y and the H to make known to the Yah the masculine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. The female gland or hormone that is in everybody's body. It's called estrogen symbolized. Should you look at the key, it's correctly played between the W and the H to make pronounce for with the feminine portion of our heavenly father's name. So whether we are man or woman, we possess the antigen and estrogen and right minutes. Testify to God in which both male and female in principle the right of being said. Elohim, which is the word of Son, is Yahweh's divine policy title. Elohim is the divine title that Yahweh chose for himself, unlike that of Lord of God. And in the Hebrew theology, it means Yah. So there's a relationship between Yahweh and Elohim, Yah and Yah. When he took the Bible to so called John 5 poetry, the same in the world when he came in his ministry states, I am come in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another or let another come in his own name, him you will receive. From a natural standpoint, a natural child when it is going into this creation takes on the natural surname of the natural hero. If that hero surname is Smith, Jones, or Lewis, that child automatically is called Smith. Jones Morris, likewise the same with the world. He said, I have found in my father. So he came taking on the masculine portion of the heavenly father, which is here. And the next part of the thing, which is pronounced Shua, in Hebrew theology, it means salvation. So his name is Yah Shua. Yah is short form for Yahweh, Shua, meaning salvation. However, we will not. Told that the name is Yahshua. We were told that the Savior's name is Jesus. And we were told that his Father's name is Lord and God to over some say Allah, some say Buddha. So let us be honest. See, let us look and see if it is possible that the Savior's name is Jesus and is coming in his Father's name. Now remember, there is no Jimmy King. Up to today, but we will still attempt it. You see? Now we have explained to you that Lord is not a name, it's a title. But when you go to the root meaning of the etymology, or we 
clear that the term Lord has originated from. You will find that the term Lord has come from Aragon. It has come from Mora. It has come from Bera. And Bera has come from Belzebub, which is the prince of demon. Or Lucifer, as you know to be. Or the serpent. So that is the term Lord originated from. It's not in order. And there is no resemblance in the Lord of Jesus to say he has come in his father's name. And his father's name is Lord. No, the Lord does the same creed, his name is God. See? So when we go to the etymology where God has come from, we find that the term God originated from the Germans who spell it Jurgiti, which is God, which is God. Which is not in Holy. And the Assyrian borrowed it from the German that spelled Shedadini, which is a pagan word. And the Indians borrowed it from the Assyrian that spelled Shuri. And if you read it from right to left, you see what you get. See? And there is no resemblance to the God of Jesus, neither the Lord of Jesus. See? Some say Jehovah. Now remember, there is no Jewish evil. See? There is no change in him, so it's impossible for the creator to say his name is Jehovah. And there is no resemblance to Jehovah and Jesus. See? Coming in this father's name. Then the question is where did they get the term Jehovah from? What did they? When they saw the text of Ramadan being represented in English as YH, W H, what did they to change it? From YH, W H to change H, B H. And they put the power point of Adonai, and that is how they created this term of God's hope. And those who are right, you look up in a book on the dictionary of Sacramedia. When you look up the term Jehovah, it will tell you a modern sacred name for God, CI. So it's not the name. It's something they made up recently in modern day time. So it's not the original name. Neither is it the name of the creator. Original or not, it's just not the name of the creator. So that you got the straight about it. And there is no resemblance to Jehovah and Jesus. No, say no, say Allah. There is no name in Arabic. And there is no resemblance to Allah. And Jesus said he has come in his father's name. Likewise, Buddha and the rest of them. Truly, in India, sure, 2,000 years ago, saying, I have come in my father's name. Taking on that masculine portion of the heavenly father's name is here. And you receive me now. He is the one who said, Let another come in his own name, him you will receive. And today the world has received Jesus and others coming in their own name and has rejected Yahshua coming in his father's name. And in Acts 1 12 tells us, Neither is there salvation. In any other. For there is none other name on the heaven given among them whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua alone. Now let me turn attention to this chair. This chair is for the Christian chair. And on this chair, Yahweh was his pure spirit. It symbolized that God. But Yahweh in his pure spirit state is not God. We only use this cloud to depict Yahweh, the seed of the cloud, as we will discern the word shape and form. Just in this orange and fiery color of the cloud, extension of the edges of the shaft, and then you can have the shaft back to the orange and fiery color of the cloud. So to the principle of the night time, there's everything in the universe, and there's some total of the speech and the fire to be the cloud of the shape of Yahweh. Yahweh is the ultimate source, substance, Yahweh is the limits, and the bounds of all things. It is within Yahweh, which is the offspring, that we all live and move and have our being. As some of your 
Pojďte, to mi a počuji, já bych pošlil. Já bych mu tak mám, to mám posypat. Opad na stáně měli z těho čtvrtý. Pokud svájte tím zájte těchto na cukru. In kompromisi pentol dari, abis itu si pentol atau mana dia hidup bersenda, tapi kaki dia berdiri, which is the word of Islam. This way, every answer more than one dia berdiri. If he are that, or he is the original pattern of the universe, it is in dia berdiri. In that same way, just the Moses and the Prophet Muhammad showed Moses. Of his surprising part, not in totality, of these nine different principal attributes of the art in an organized shape of form. Divine wisdom, divine knowledge, from divine intelligence, divine love, divine justice, divine duty, divine foundation, divine strength, and divine power. And the Yahweh had noticed the living children of Israel of the nation. He called Moses on top of Mount Sinai. Where he loved the Elohim, instantaneously transformed himself into the street food, thoroughly polished tabernacle fire, or sanctuary in that place, which consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court of law. One, two, three compartments, but one tabernacle fire. We go out in this room and hold up everything in the universe, is made in our rooms. Going to the structure and function of the divine tabernacle, and that absolutely nothing escapes the fire. The army of the Lord was to Moses, for he created the heavens and the earth, appointed the divine tabernacle, and he showed Moses the creation coming out of his side. The army of the Lord could only be seen in the divine vision. And sometimes accompanied by the divine revelation, I was given to the so called John of the Nine of Arms in the year of 1896, in which he wrote in the so called first book of Timsala, chapter 1 of the beginning, and the third verse he states, In the beginning was the world. And the world was with Yahweh, and the world was Yahweh. Same as in the beginning with Yahweh, all things was made by him. Yahweh Elohim. And without him, Yahweh Elohim was not anything made that was made. His name was life. And that life was the little life or the life of man. Finally, Yahweh Elohim manifested himself in the physical shape of the form of a man, entitled Yahshua the Messiah, who the religious world promptly or ignorantly calls Jesus Messiah. This is going to be by that same so called potential. Chapter 1, beginning of the 14th verse, says, And the word, Yahweh the Lord, was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we declare his glory, the glory as of the only God of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Now, in this book, we have Ken Crown, in which you should have gained, and I will check this to God of God. To help you find a new Yahweh of an element as he really is and actually exists. Two to form a universal purpose of humanity in the actual Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, class, or color. Three things that explain the unexplained spirit law, or so called law of nature, and the power statement in man. For to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, combined with religion, psychology, and philosophy, and modern practical and other science. Fifth, the execrate from superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Since to learn, grow, and understand the operation of the hours, eternal purpose operating through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by the power of the silver, the dragon, and Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth. To the dispensation of time. If to earnestly contend with the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of God. Nine, to make known that God was from the beginning of the day. There is no other name under heaven given among men where God must be saved. 
save it in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua and Ted to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new state. Our watch is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. Our scripture lesson this morning will be taken from the Holy Cross in John, the 15th chapter. These things I command you, that you love one another. 
if the world gave you, you know that it, that it hated me before it hated you. If you go of the world, the world would love you. Sorry, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sin, they will be. They will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not.
the scripture has right here and print it. Prophet Isaiah is saying, as I read and read it, to the Lord and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light, no knowledge, no understanding, or no Holy Spirit in there. So as I am saying, if anybody desire to teach you or give you any divine knowledge or instructions, they must take you first to the law and they must take you first to the prophecy. See? Now the law is not just ten commandments that we have been taught, but the law is the first five books of the Bible from Genesis to Deuteronomy. That's the law. And there are 613 laws in all. So you say you must go to the law and you must go to the testimony. Now the testimony are your prophets. So if you say you must go to the law, you must go to the testimony. So you have five books of the law from Genesis to Deuteronomy, that's the law. The testimony is the next three, four books of the Bible, what it tell you from Joshua to Malachi. And if by now you have been listening and know that there is no J in Hebrew, then you would know that man's name is not really Joshua. That is truly Yahshua to Malachi. See? So you must go to the Lord and to the must go to the testimony. And then you must speak according to the word. And if you speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in there. Now we are told that the word they are referring to in the Bible is the Bible. See? No, I have been listening. I do listen to everybody. I do find a way to listen to what everybody is saying. And quite recently, you heard one astute religious leader promoting the King James Bible to be the word. See? That's your educated theologians. See? And he's promoting this King James Bible to be the Word of God. You see, that's very accurate. See? But Proverbs 29 18 tells us where there is no vision or where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. Not where there is no books and Bibles and theology colleges. And seminary schools, the people perish. So, where there is no vision, there is no divine vision and revelation from the army children, the people perish. And that is what we've seen across the world. People with their carnal, academic mind, they have taken this Bible and they have. Just made a mess of it. Just put it in very simply, they have just made a mess of it with their kind of mind. Because if they go to what they call John 1 1, it tells you in the beginning was the word. So since in the beginning was the word, there was no books or Bibles in the beginning. So that right here, that big boy theologian, he is blinded by his carnal mind. And he's supporting and he's promoting the King James Version of the Bible. 
spend a lot of time and a lot of words doing it. And he has not read it and seen it. He has read it, but he has not seen it. That in the same King James Version of the Bible, it's saying in the beginning of the words, it was not saying in the beginning was the King James Version or any other version of a Bible. So in the beginning was the word, which is the spirit of the living Elohim, that's the word, that created everything that was created or made. That is who the word is, not a physical word. Yeah, and the same thing James Version is indicting the preacher man, because right in here it's saying, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh, but it didn't say Yahweh in the King James Version. The King James Version said that the word was with God, the one who called God, and the word was God. So even if they called him God, which is an erroneous title, it is telling you the Bible is not the word. That the one who created the heavens and the earth, that's the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. The same, all things was made by Him. The word. Have you seen your Bible make anything of it? See? All things was made by Him. And you notice how we call the word, we call the word Him. If you want to refer to the Bible as the word, you have to say Him. All things was made by Him, the word. And without him, which is Elohim, that is why we have to say him. That is Yahweh in his Elohistic shape and form of a man, without flesh and blood, that's why we say without him. Elohim was not anything made that was made. Everything that was made was made by Elohim, which is the word. See, and then it goes on to tell you, and the word was made flesh. And dwell among us. So that is Elohim manifesting himself in the physical shape and form of a man. That you wrongfully call Jesus, who is truly Yahshua. That's the word made flesh. The one that made everything manifested himself in the physical shape and form of a man. And he's the one that is full of grace and full of truth. So every Bible I have said it already. Every Bible that man and I have translated is for error. They have their errors. See? And the most notice of, noticeable of all errors is they have removed the name of the Creator, who is Yahweh Elohim, and his son Yahshua, from those texts. But through this divine vision and revelation, is Yahweh gave to Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy. You see, it was prophesied to him that the names is going to be turned back into books and Bible. So it is not surprising that we have them in books and Bibles today. So as I said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light, no knowledge, no understanding, or no Holy Spirit in there. See, and I have been saying, and I continue to say, if you are wrong this teaching long enough, you will be able to recite a lot of the things that I am talking to you about. But that does not mean to say the Holy Spirit is in one. See, you have to speak according to the Holy Spirit. Not reciting. See? And it's a painful thing to see people come to these schools and learn and they maintain that same that they're walking with. They're just modifying 
to suit what they are hearing. See? And they treated it just like how they treat whatever they came out from. And that's bad. That's really bad. See? It's painful to understand that. See? However, some things have to happen according to the purpose of the hour. So one must go to the law and do the testament and must be appointed to it. You turn your back to the tongue and you can it. And you find this, those who have been read the edition, you will find these words written in red. And if you tell you these words written in red, it's the exact words of Yahshua Messiah. Trump 5, 39. He said, you search the scripture. First of all, we need to know what the scriptures are in order to search it. Because not everything you read in that book is scripture. So you search the scriptures, for so then you think you have it to the land. So what's the scripture? The scriptures are the law and the prophets. That first five books of the Bible, and the next 24 books of the prophets, that's the scripture. So that is what the actual Messiah was referring to when he was walking to Fuji and the Palestinian kings and preaching and teaching. He tell him to search the scripture. See? Which is the law and the prophets. Which is from Genesis to Malachi. That's the scripture. So then the question is, you see, how do you even say that? What about Matthew to Revelation? See? Now remember when the actual Messiah was speaking back there, the part of the Bible you were reading from, that you call the New Testament, was not written yet. Not one word of it was written. So you could not have been referring to that part of the Bible when he said he searched the scriptures. For in them he think he had eaten or not. No, up to today, see, mankind think they have eaten and right by reading and reciting verses of scripture in your Bible. Some words again think if they go practicing some of the things that they see in the Bible that they're going to have eternal life. And here is Yahshua Messiah is telling them examine it, search it, not just purely read it, but make a thorough examination of it, of the scriptures. For in them you think. See, it's all about in your head. See, what you think don't change the truth. For in them you think you have it to learn that. See? In other words, brainwashed. You see, but they are the testifier of me. They are foretelling of the actual Messiah. That's what the scripture is telling you. They are a forerunner. 
So everything that is in the law and in the prophecy is really pointing to Yahshua Messiah. And this they have not understood yet. So people have been dubious and believe, well, look, I like this particular thing, it sounds good. And I can practice that for my religion. She? He said, no. You think you have to do that. Everything that is written in the law and in the prophets is testified on the Ashura Messiah. So that is why when he came into the world and he came into his ministry, remember he was born. And when he was born, he was already prophesied. Before he was born, his birth was prophesied. Man of fact, it was prophesied since in the Garden of Eden. But you don't know that. You don't know since in the Garden of Eden his birth was prophesied. Did Joshua tell the woman after the transgression? That she's going to be saved in childbearing. Because salvation is going to come through her. You check that out. See? That is what she was told. Salvation. See? It's going to come through her. So right there in the Garden of Eden, it was prophesied the birth of Yahshua Nazar. Yahshua coming through the loins of a woman. Some don't believe that even happened. Even if they use it, Jesus, some don't believe it. I've listened to preachers who condemn that. See? And all through the law and the prophets was foretelling of his birth. And we did that in some lectures past. See? Isaiah prophesied, Malachi prophesied, Micah prophesied about his coming. So when he came into the world, and at age 30, he appeared at John's water baptism. See? Then you hear somebody say, we have to go and do that. See? While Yahshua is saying, so is the scriptures. For in them think you have eternal life, they and they that testify of me. So we get there and we say, everything that is in the law and in the prophets, Yahshua Messiah came and fulfilled it. So that is why you tell the multitudes in Matthew 5, 17 and 18. See, when they were criticizing the fact that he was fulfilling the law of prophets, and they did not understand that was what he was doing, he had to so-called tell them what he's doing. Having told them, they could not understand. They could not understand what he was saying. He said words that they don't understand. See, the Holy Spirit had to repeat it to them what he was saying. See, they couldn't understand it. 
Because what they're looking at, they're looking at things carnally. They're looking at these laws that were set up with Moses and the children of Israel. And who is he to come and tear them? That is what they're looking at. So we have to find a way to shut him up. See? So we realize what man, when man does not understand what's taking place. What they do. See? When they can control a situation, what they do? They destroy it. So they this, this sort of destroy it. See? And what they was using? They was using the principle of the Sabbath day. See? To make accusations against them. What was worse, they didn't, although the Lord and the prophets testified of him, they didn't recognize him. They did not recognize he's the one that was spoken about through all the scriptures. She asked the hand and they couldn't see. Here's the hand and they couldn't hear. Why? Because the spirit of the world blinded. And it's happening up to today. So we have the Lord, we have the prophets. So what you read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is an account of these different persons explaining in their own way the experience of how Yahshua the Messiah was fulfilling the Lord of the prophets. And what could they mean to complete and to bring something to an end? So that was what he was doing in his ministry. He was not setting up an example for you and I to follow. Had he been doing that, there would have been nobody alive at 34 years. As simple as that. Society's age will have been for the most of the 34 years. Because at 23 and a half years, he was offered up. He was offered up for the sins of the world at 33 and a half years. So we we walking in Jesus' footstep or Yahshua's footstep, then nobody should be alive at 34 years. See? But that is not what's taking place. So what's really taking place? In some instances, we say we call in him. See? And in other instances, we're not going that far. So are we calling him or are we not calling him? So we say we follow him when it comes to water baptism. But when it comes to crucifying ourselves, we don't want to do that. So who are we following? Huh? So 
the Lord of Prophets has been testifying on the outside of his life. Give me John, the 17th chapter. Now, in the 17th chapter of the so called St. John, we have the actual Messiah of God of Gethsemane, the night before he betrayed him, he crucified. And he's praying this prayer for his disciples. Now, that prayer is not for everybody. It was not for everybody. When you read about it, it was the prayer for his disciples. Just like all the poor father's prayer was for his disciples. It was not for everybody. See? And it's if these words speak Yahshua. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, we call it God. So they say he lifted up his eyes to heaven. Somebody would think he's looking up into the sun, moon, and stars. That's a common man. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. The time has come for him to take on the sins of the world on himself. See, the purpose of the creation is right within him. He said, Glorify thy son, who you are sure that I son more to the Lord by the Father, who you are the elder. As the Father in Yahweh to him, and to the King in Yahshua, power over all flesh. But you see, your King James Version does not have it like that. See, that the, the, the preacher man does say so correct. See, see, hear what your King James Version is saying. See, your King James Version says, these words save Jesus. Right there. She became James Version wrong. Right there, that whole Bible became wrong. Because it was not Jesus. See? But he's making a case that King James Version. is what everybody is supposed to be using. It's, it's correct. So when you read it and it says, these words speak Jesus, right here, the King James Version, as good. But what they're saying, we don't know who the Savior the word is. See? Or we lying to you. Because if something is taking place, you must know who is doing it. And if you don't know who is doing it, I always say shut your mouth. See? Because you will be lying to the people. So right there, the King James Version has showed up their error. It was not these words speak Jesus, these words speak Yahshua. So that is why I said all Bibles have errors in it. The one who is full of grace and truth is Yahshua the Messiah. Anything man touch corrupts. So what the King James Version said, these words make Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, we always come. That's what it said. Look again, we look at another problem. It's goes on to say, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. T H T E. This is in the English. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify what? Thee. Tell me, whose name, who named T H T E? Nobody named thee. You see? 
And it goes on in the second verse of the 17th chapter see, of John. And it goes on to say, As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Who names thou? So right here we see the King James Version is willfully not using the correct name and title of the creator of the world, nor the savior of the world. So when you finish reading, you do not know who is speaking. You do not understand what's really taking place. So that is why you have to answer holy name by to correct it. As thou hast given him over all this, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So you have a deep human. Why? Because you refuse to put the true name of the Creator in the book and the true name of the Savior. As thou hast given him. You go back now and you see that man knew that thou whose name alone is Yahweh, and the most high book of all the earth. Alone. And I told you, tell me, he has many names. He has many titles, but not many names. So when you put in your true name and title in the book, back into the King James book, then you shall understand what is being said. So he said, these words truly spoke beyond sure. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, it always come. Glorify thy son, that thy son be sure, also my glorified father, who is the hour of heaven and the hour that the body Yahweh held him had given him Yahshua power over all flesh. So when we get the name and the titles put back in there, we see who has the power. See that Yahweh turned over the power in the name of Yahshua. See? And it goes on to say that he should get eternal life to as many as the Father Yahweh Elohim had given him. So not only does he have the power over all flesh, but he has the power to grant eternal life. See? And as of late, we've been having some prominent people dying. See? Very educated, very knowledgeable people. See people who have made very sterling contribution to this nation. And when you listen at their internment, you have to wonder. See that I did not realize there are so much different gods that is worshipped down here. The amount of men that is worshipped down here as the creator and the savior of the world have been baptized. See? And at no time at all, I heard any one of the religious leaders use the true name of the creator, who is Yahweh Elohim, and the son Yahshua the son. And these religious leaders was your street religious leader, your prominent religious leader, you see, in 
definition and not one of them used the name Yahweh Elohim and his son Yahshua the Messiah. And I said, What a nation! What a nation who has turned their back from the living element. Hmm? You think they don't know? Yes, they know. All of them know. I've made sure that I have passed the literature to all of them. So they know. But hmm? so he's so Yahshua the Messiah is the one who has the power over all of us that he should give eternal life. So eternal life is coming from him and him alone. See? Eternal life is in him, not in anyone else. You see, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God of the King James Version, because that's the version I'm reading here from. See? And the King James Version said the only true God. So right there, that King James Version didn't tell you they got false ones. See? So then you have to know who the only true God is. See, it can't be God, because God is not a name, it's a title. So the only true God cannot be God. So you have to know who the only true creator is in the world, because eternal life is to know that. See, to know the only true God, and this King James would just say, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So now he said Jesus Christ, but it went on to also so say the one that was sent. So you and I need to know who was the one sent into the world 2,000 years ago and offered himself for the sins of the world. We need to know who is this was sent. Since there was no one back there named Jesus. See? Because salvation is in his name. Salvation is in the name of Yahshua. Any other name, you have no salvation. To be seen people, you see, and to care about people, and they see that they are destroying their souls or their eternal life because they are in defense of a religion. Not in defense of the soul. No, the defense of a religion. And not the religion is going to save them. There's no part of the Bible that says any religion, mind or yours, is going to save mankind. Hmm? See? No. See? So it's seven us here. The Ashton Messiah has been given power over all of them. That we should get into the line to as many as the Father Yahweh Elohim had given him. And he goes on to tell us what eternal life is, and this is life eternal. That we might know. You have to know him. See? That you have to come to know the only true creator in the world, and come to know the only true savior in the world. That is eternal life. So I can go ahead and show you a whole set of different things. But if you don't understand that Yahshua the Messiah is going to lie to him, 
If you don't understand that you know in the morning your creator who is Yahweh Elohim and his son Yahshua Messiah, what's the point? Hmm? Because if you can't accept his death, burial, resurrection, and his own power and the Holy Spirit, what should you to accept? Hmm? So when I recognize the country, the leaders refuse to even mention the name of Yahweh and the Son National Messiah in this country. And they represented all the religions. I said they do. Hmm? Oh, yeah. None other than having respect for the Creator in His name and the Savior in His name. It hurts. See? So the fourth verse in the 17th chapter. St. John says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. So now all the works was finished by him. Yahshua Messiah finished all the works. All the works that the Father gave him, he finished it. He completed it and he brings it to him. What are they standing up? See? That Yahshua the Messiah did not leave any work for us to do for us to get salvation. That, that is what that is saying. All the works that was in the law and was done through the prophets, he finished all. And he said, I finished the works. See? All these water baptisms of Lord and um, Passover memorial feasts and all these sacrifices and celebrations. He said he finished them. He completed them and brought them to an end before he was offered up. Hmm? For the sins of the world. He's saying that the judge before he's offered up, he said the God of the family, and he said he has finished doing all the works that was in the law and the prophets. So that is how he's saying. He completed it or fulfilled it. See, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me before me with thy own self, with the glory which I have with thee before the world was. He goes on to say, I have manifested my name. Unto the man which thou hast given me, which thou givest to me, out of the world, thine they will, and thou hast given me, given them, and they have kept my word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them. The words which thou givest me. See what is what he gave them? The words that the Father gave them. That's the same words you are getting. You get it no different words. And they have received them, and have known surely that I come out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. See? I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and all thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So he was not praying for the world. Joshua was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was not praying for the world, neither was he setting up an example for the world to pray either. See? He made that clear, just like what we made it clear when you come to the Holy Father Cross. See? When you get to the Holy Father Cross, you will find that is one of his disciples asked him, Master, 
teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. He was not given the will of God. See? If the disciple was asking for a prayer, Tell them when you pray, these are the words you have to say. So he didn't give the word of our Father for us, but it's the word of God. See? And you will get that in Luke, we left the chapter. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, We have King James, who goes and have law, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. See, he was not asking for a proper word, teach them to pray. And he said unto them, When ye pray, not when everybody pray, when you pray, You say, Our oh, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so in earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is in death into us. That's a lie. We don't do that. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See? And then went on to say, which of, of you, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and went into the power? But he didn't leave no problem for nobody to go and to say. Just like in the garden of the seventy, he didn't give us no problem. So people copy and think you know it's not what you're copying about. See, it sounds good. See? But the part that says, forgive us that our trespasses, as we forgive others, or forgive us as we forgive those who are indebted to us, we don't want that part. We don't practice that part. See? So eternal life is in him. So eternal life is to know the true creator, who is Yahweh Elohim, and his son Yahshua Messiah. And eternal damnation is not to know. See? So if I have to be guided, by those religions and religious leaders who will offer drugs and condolences recently. Hmm? And none of them show that they respected on you the true creator and the true savior. Then, and they the religious leaders of this world, of this country. Tell me what is the future, the spiritual future of this land? Hmm? But my you do you know, the just like Pharaoh, they behave exactly like Pharaoh 
pulire. Sì? When, Pharaoh, when, when Moses went to the, and declared the name to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, I do not know Yahweh, neither will I let the children of Israel go free. Hmm? So those, all those religions got up, and all of them denied Yahweh and his son Yahshua the Messiah. I say, how evil could they be? And all of them were huh? Something else. To eternal life, you should know the true creator. And eternal God, you shall not know. See so when Pharaoh said he didn't know, he destroyed it, but he didn't know. So we must go to the law and to the testimony and we must speak according to the spirit of the living element. See? So the spirit of the living element must know the creator name and must know the savior name. This is where we are coming from. If you're preaching and teaching with the Holy Spirit in one, then at least you should know the, the name of the Creator and you should know the name of the Savior. See, the first man to receive the name of the Spirit of the Lord was Moses at the baptism of the Lord's hand. And to see such prominent people here, and not all of them, have known the true Creator of the Lord. Something else. So we see, when we begin at Moses, we see that Moses was born at the time of the dead to be. Showing you the principle of death. Because back here, Pharaoh asked the Lord to kill up all the Hebrew male children. Now today, in today's world, it's fashionable to kill out children. It's fashionable to kill out people in general. It has become the norm. See, the rich folks have come up with this concept, with this plan, and this is that there's too much people in the world. The world is overpopulated. And we have to reduce the population of the world. Exactly like Pharaoh. See? Some of them buy it. See, they buy up the land, so eventually they own the world. See, that's what's going on in this world. The manifestation changes for the principle of the remain in the same. So you have certain wealthy and over wealthy people. They might have most of the family in the world. They make it difficult for the family. Just like 
Sì, Papa non mi dice, io voglio sentire la tua cosa. Sì, e mi so che il tuo ministro non era molto kind to propagate. And they were joined with this enemy that overthrew him. So we have to contain these people. We have to make sure they do not want to die. That is what's taking place in the face of the world as we speak. In various forms, see? You see that they are manufacturing. Scientifically manufacturing and manipulating dangerous viruses to destroy mankind. They have one that they do in dealing with right now. That they have manufactured in the lab to attack the brain. And from my research, they show it. I've been tested out and it's on a species of rats that they have given human DNA in their particular rats to see the effect that they have on humans. And they said when they have given them, have been given them to this virus that they have created. Those rats and mice sleep for only six days. They call it biological warfare. Then somebody will tell me that that came from the natural environment. See? When they let it go. This is my plan today. This is what is happening in our day. See? It seems like with the death of man, mankind is going to be coming to your scientists and your politicians. It seems so. I don't know for sure, but it seems so. So they were killing all these people, men, children, people, and his men. So that's the death. These human men children were cast into the river, buried under the water. So that's the death of the river. They were killed in the river's field. The river contains water, so that's blood water. At that time, the same time that Moses was born. He was born a goodly child, representing the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And it takes nine months for 40 little weeks for a child to be born. So the Lord of Moses is not a priest of God, the Holy Spirit. 40, nine months for 40 little weeks for a child to be born. So at the very beginning of Moses, we have a priest of God, the Holy Spirit, 40. Yet, very. Then Moses was placed in an ark of old rushes. See? And he was covered down. See, in that old rushes, ark of old rushes, was dark with slime and with pitch. See? So he's dark and he's very big there. See? He's taken on by the people's daughter. So the bush showed that very well. And when you stay north, north of the land, it's like counter resurrection. So the bush showed that very well and the resurrection. Beginning of the Muslims. Because the scriptures, the Lord of the prophets, we 
have to be more remembered that it is testified in the actual design. What is what did it say? In the law, it is saying that the actual Messiah has to come in. He has to die, he has to be buried, and he has to resurrect on the two of That is why the scripture about for telling of him. See? If we fall in the scripture, and we say we want to do the things we see in the Bible, why are we not practicing these things? So he goes to show that there is a resurrection on the third day because it was a third month of his life and a month in the body or a given problem of the principle of the third day. So when we begin at Moses, we see the scripture that is testified of Yahshua the Messiah. Knowing that Yahshua the Messiah must come in and he must die and be buried in a resurrection on the third day. Because the scriptures are uh, foretelling of him. And when he came in, he said, he has to be in the world of complete it, and bring the end. So this is the end. It is laid down in the Lord of Prophets what he has to do. So we get the prophets and all the activities and the experiences is written about in the prophets. You see this pointing to the same thing. All of them. See, whether the Daniel and the Lion is there. Samson and Goliath. Sorry, David and Goliath. Samson and the Philistines. All is pointing to the same death. There will be a resurrection on the third day. Lord, the Lord is still born. So that's why we bring Jonah, because most people know about Jonah. He was cast overboard because of his disobedience to the spoken word of Yahweh. See? And Yahweh tells him to go and preach to Nineveh, but he was good to mention his way to Tarsus. See, yeah, we have a great tempest on the sea, so much so that the sailors will have prayed. But not to know. See, this opinion people don't be afraid. That is something else. Stubborn people do not be afraid. Hmm. So how did they, those sailors, shoot all their wheels? Overboard and everything the life we should they come to and sleep. The sleep is so nominous to death. See? And wake him up. Who are you? What's your nationality? Who do you serve? I am a hero. I serve the army the Lord. Who is the army the Lord? We don't know that. We know about all those words that were calling on the other day. Yeah. We know about them, but we don't know what we are. We are telling them that we are the other one. They say, one who made the will and the way, who we created, who created everything. So, why is your Yahweh, your creator, the one that you serve? Why is he? She. Why is it terrifying like that? Terrifying like that. See? Why is this great storm taking place? So he has to confess. See? That he was disobedient to the spoken word of Yahweh. So, he asked what could we do with him and he cast me overboard that the sea might be calm not to do. So when he cast, he didn't want to cast him, but when he cast him over, she yelled, what a great fish to swallow the woman. 
to say that they sacrifice, blood sacrifice, so that we have the blood. The sea being the water, Yahweh manifests the ten person of sea, blood, water, and spirit. Then Jonah was cast full of water with fish, so the Lord is in the fish belly. It's considered there that very in the fish belly. Yeah, very well. See then, Yahweh had that fish to take him to Nineveh, the first submarine we know of in the world. Give them everything else for that. 
if you want to believe what is doing. People fighting, seek to support religion, not the soul. It's not about truth. It's not about truth.
e agora o Jumabe. Amplia-me. Três notas primeiro. So you get that. They see everything in this universe. Goes through the same principle of a debt, a barrier, and a resurrection. Everything in the universe. The testify that Yahshua Messiah has died, was buried, and resurrected on the third day, according to the scriptures, so the whole creation testifies to that. The whole creation testifies that his name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahshua. And to see your religious leaders here don't know his name or pretend not to know the name of the creator's truly Yahweh and his son's name is Yahshua. Huh? So they can set up for the example. But they do not, they just like Pharaoh. See, he was cast out. He was that great dragon that was cast out of heaven. And he denied him in Yahweh. And his son Yahshua was there. See, and for denying him knowing Yahweh, Yahweh played Egypt with 10 divides, they said, what? Please. Look around the world, you see the world is being played. Hmm? 39 Yahweh and his son Yahshua on the side. That's what's taking place on the face of the earth. A seed, they dig the ground, they cover it back with the earth that represents a death and a burial. In that seed, a resurrection comes up. The same seed that they bury, the farmer will not plant. The farmer will not plant if he knows that the same seed he buried is that what's going to come up by itself. You know what plant? Showing you that that burial resurrection, it has a transformation in it. It never comes up the way you planted it. That is telling you about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So Yahshua Messiah has resurrected a spiritual body, not a flesh and blood body. He did not resurrect a flesh and blood body. He resurrected in life giving or a king spirit. To show you, you see every day you depend on the sun to resurrect every day. You expect the sun to go down and you see them, and you do that show the, uh, the natural sun in the universe. Is telling us about the spiritual son who is the actual Messiah. That he did that, was buried, and resurrected for each and every one of us. That is what that is talking about. It's also saying for us to live naturally, something has to die. The 
cool you eat, it has to die. Thank you. 